Welcome to ECLEMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lessons, we discussed methods of measuring length and we said we only have two methods of measuring length. One was estimation and the other one was accurate measurement by using an accurate or a measuring instrument. Now in this lesson, we are going to focus on length estimation and we are going to see how we can estimate different types of length like height of a tree, height of a student, height of a building and many other things which we can estimate. My name is Albert. I hope you are enjoying the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe, describe the process of measuring a circumference of a cylinder using estimation method and then explain the process of estimating the height of a tree by using estimation method. Now, the first estimation that we are going to carry out is how to estimate the circumference of a cylinder. And what you do, you take a thread, let's say you have a red thread, and then you have a cylinder. And what you do, the first step, you closely wrap a thin thread, this thread, you wrap it closely, around the cylinder 10 times so like in this case you start from here and then you wrap 10 times and then at the beginning of the thread at the beginning of the thread you make a mark there and then at the end of the 10th wrap you also make a wrap there and then you are going to see if you remove this thread it will look like this it will be having two marks at the two ends and the distance here represents 10 wraps. Now, after you have done your 10 wraps, then you remove the thread, let's say it was a red thread, like in this case, and then you put it on top of a meter rule or another measuring uh, length measuring instrument. And then remember it was having some blue marks so the mark was there and there then when you measure like in this case if we measure if we measure and the rope and the thread was of that size then we are going to have a distance of 68 minus 64 which is 4.0 centimeters and this one we call it r1 then now repeat two times you repeat the whole procedure of wrap making a mark at the beginning you wrap 10 times then you put it on the measuring instrument, you record R2. Then you record what you get. Then you record R3. Then you record down what you get. Now, why do we do it three times? Remember when we were discussing scientific methods of learning, we said after you have got your hypothesis, any scientific research that you do, the first result we call it hypothesis. Then you have to test your hypothesis by repeating the procedure as many times as possible. So that's why we do it three times for accuracy purposes. So you do it two and three times, and then now you find average of the 10 wraps. So to get average, you take R1, you add R2, then you add to R3, and then you divide by the number of times that you repeated your experiment. If you repeat four times to get R4, then you will add the R4 and then you divide by four. Then after that, now to get the average of uh, 10 wraps, we have said you divide it by three. And then now to get the length of one wrap, one wrap, we are going to call it the circumference. To get the circumference, it means only one wrap, the distance around the cylinder once, then what you do, you take R, which is for 10 wraps, then you divide by 10 times because you are wrapping it 10 times. And then what you will get will be the for one wrap. And one wrap is the same as the circumference. The circumference is equals to one wrap. So in this case, you could have been the circumference. And then if you want to know the diameter, then you use the relationship from mathematics. Circumference is equals to pi d. d is the 
diameter of the cylinder, then pi is a constant. Then in this case, if you need the diameter, it will be circumference over pi, which is now your circumference. And if you need the radius, then you will take, you, you are told 2r, 2r is equals to d. Therefore, if you have d now, you will divide it by 2 to get the radius of the cylinder. So let's take one example so that we understand. A length of 250 centimeters of a thin thread rubs a cylinder 15 times. Calculate the circumference and the radius of the cylinder. So what we should note here is that we have a thread which is 250 centimeters. Then now this thread will go around the cylinder 15 times. Then it means we must get how many centimeters are there when it goes one time. So, and to get that for one turn, it will be 250 centimeters divided by 15 times, and it's going to give us 16.67 centimeters. This is the one the length for one turn or for one wrap around the cylinder and then the question is asking calculate the circumference and the radius of the cylinder so one or one cycle or one turn around a cylinder is the same as the circumference so in this case we have the circumference then now the second question is the radius of the cylinder we know circumference circumference from mathematics, we know is equals to pi 2r, or we can call it pi d because 2r is the same as d. So in this case, our circumference is 16.67 centimeters, which is the same as 22 over 7 is our pi times 2 times r. So our r will be 16.67 divided by 22 over 7 in centimeters which is going to give us 5.304 centimeters so when we are doing a calculation involving divisions and multiplications we give our answers in four significant significant figures so that is the answer for the radius and then this is the answer for the circumference when it, you calculate the number of times it goes once around the cylinder oh yes we have another example here which is going to help us understand better tom found that the perimeter of his farming plot was approximately 750 strides this stride one stride is 0 0.9 meters what was the perimeter of the plot so the, 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 the perimeter of the plot according to the strides is 750 strides but one stride Tommy's stride is equal to 0 0.9 meters now to get the perimeter then you must know what distance is covered by 750 strides so you will say if one stride is equals to 0 0.9 meter then 750 stripes how many meters will it cover if you close multiply it will be 750 stripes times 0 0.9 meter over 1 stride now in this case stride will cancel with the stride and then you will remain with the answer as 675 meters so the perimeter perimeter of tommy's farm is 675 strides now let's move to estimation of a height of a tree and I will encourage you to do this experiment after this class. You go outside and make this estimation. 
If you want to estimate the height of a tree, first you need to identify the tree that you want to estimate its height. And then the other thing, you must carry this experiment either in the morning or evening when the sun is making a, a large shadow. So what you do, you have to have the tree that you want to estimate its height and then you need a height of a road. You need a road of known height. For example, you can take a meter rule or even yeah, a meter rule. And then you need a tape measure. Tape measure is going to help you to measure the length of the shadow. And then what you do, you hold the rod upright next to the tree that you want to measure. So you take this rod, you hold it upright in such a way that it also makes a shadow adjacent to the tree that you want to measure. And then since you know the height of this rod, now you measure the length of the shadow of that rod. So you have the rod, you make it upright, and then you measure its shadow. So you will have two recordings. Height of the rod, you know it, and you know the shadow, height, the length of the shadow of the rod. And then you go to the shadow of the tree, and then you make a measurement using the tape measure. From this point to this point, you make this measurement, and you record it as the length of the shadow of the tree. And now you will use this one to calculate the height of the tree. So after you have obtained the height of the rod, which you knew, let's call it HR, and you want to know the height of the tree, which we call HT, and you have measured the length of the shadow of the, of the rod, let's call it LR, length of the shadow of the rod, and you have also measured using a tape measure, the length of the shadow of the tree, let's call it LT, then you can use the above relationship, this relationship, to calculate the height of the tree. Now in this case, you know the length of the shadow of the tree, you know the length of the shadow of the rod, and then you know the height of the rod, you are only looking for the height of the tree. So if you can, you can write this relationship down, it will be height of the tree divided by height of the rod is going to be equals to length of the shadow of the tree you divide by length of the shadow of the rod. So if you are keen, you will realize that heights are on one side and the height of the tree is above, then the height of the rod is below. And when you go to the shadows, shadows are on one side, length of the shadow of the tree, the longer one, is at the top, and then length of the shadow of the rod is below. So we are going to do a few examples so that you understand this one better. The first example is, in an experiment, to estimate the height of the tree at the EC Elimu compound, Faith recorded the following data. First, he recorded the length of the shadow of the tree. Let's call this one uh, LT, length of the shadow of the tree. He recorded it as 1,200 centimeters. Length of the shadow of the rod, let's call it L. R, length of the shadow of the rod, he recorded it as 300 centimeters. Height of the rod, let's call it HR, he recorded it as 150 centimeters. Now the question is, determine the height of the tree. Now from the relationship that we have looked at, height of the tree over height of the rod is equals to length of the shadow of the tree over length of the shadow of the rod. Now, do we have height of the tree? No, that's what we are looking for. Do we have height of the rod? Yes, it's 150 centimeters is equals to. Do we have length of the shadow of the tree? Yes, it's 1,200 centimeters. Do we have length of the shadow of the rod? Yes. 
it is 300 centimeters. Now from this case, you will do your close multiplication and it will be height of the tree times 300 is equals to 150 times 1200. So now to remain with the height of the tree, we divide by 300 in both sides. Now this one will cancel with this one, and then we will remain with the height of the tree is equals to, which is 150 times 1200 is 180,000 defined by 300, which is going to give us 600 centimeters. Remember, we worked everything in centimeters. So it, the height of the tree is 600 centimeters. Now, students, that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss another quantity that's a derived quantity which we call area.